Hello and welcome to Pigs on the Run, powered by Pigworks and p and I'm Betsy Ross, and today our guest is Michael Laux from Burke Incorporated, a longtime partner of the Flying Pig Marathon. Michael also is a Flying Pig board member. Michael, how are you today? Doing great. Thanks for having me, Betsy. Good. As I mentioned, uh, Burke is a, a longtime partner with the Flying Pig and its events. Uh, Burke does market research and, and a whole lot more, but... We'll talk first about just what your company has been doing and partnering with the pig over these last few years. As I say, you have been really an integral part in the pig and its development and its growth. Yeah, we uh, we support the the pig in a, a number of different ways. Our, our core is that we take the uh, the feedback from participants. So the racers, the runners, the folks who participate in the pig, the queen bee, um, the beer series, we have post-race surveys. So. Um, what did you like? What didn't you like? Where should more restrooms be on the course? And, and all of the, the elements of the parties and the medals and all of those pieces are, we're the feedback loop. So um, if you liked your experience, you tell us that. If you didn't, we're glad to hear that too, so we can get better. Well, it's one thing to ask the question, and it's another thing entirely to ask the question so that your clients get the information that they need. So using the pig as an example how do you work with the pig and your clients to really make the most out of those surveys so that your clients do get the information that they need it really starts with understanding what they're trying to do with the information are they trying to uh, make changes are they trying to change the perception that the that participants have about them their brand their experience uh, many times the, the the brand experience encompasses everything from the logo to the 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 color of the shirt and the um, uh, every element that uh, that that goes into uh, into that. So understanding what do you want to do is is where we start as we develop surveys and and really research design. Um, are you going to make a change in how you're communicating with your constituent base? Are you going to launch a new product? Are you going to launch? A new race. We, we've had lots of conversations. If you back up to uh, before the FC um, three race, where do we go? How? What does the pig, um, from a broad standpoint, mean, and how can that dovetail and connect with FC and bring that to life? And and what you saw in the FC race was was really a culmination of that. So how do we bring that feedback loop all the way around and and help uh, um, help our clients really make those decisions? And one example of that, even before the FC race, um, well, six years ago now, seven years, we were thinking about doing a female-centric race. And we thought right. that there was an audience for it, but it's one thing to think that there's an audience for it yeah. and then to hear at a focus group that, yes, there is an audience <laughs> for that. Exactly, exactly. And um, so much of it is in who do we talk with, right? So let's get the right people um, that are the, the folks that are participating with us today, who can we attract new though? What are their needs? What do they want from uh, a true race experience? And, and that very much led into the development of, uh, of the strategy around Pigworks and uh, in changing, uh, giving us a platform to understand where does fun, where does philanthropy, where does community service all fit within all of the different elements and how does that play out differently for the Flying Pig, for the Queen Bee, for the Beer Series, and the, and the rest. Of course, this is the year of the virtual event. And right. while we're waiting to get back there to that start line and finish line, we're not sure yet exactly how participants are perceiving getting back and when they will feel safe. You've yeah. done some research for the Flying Pig about just when you think, when runners say, they will be ready to come back. Talk a little bit about that. So when we were in the very early stages of, uh, of the pandemic, one of the questions that, that we took up on the board was to say, well, well what, is the, what is the right timing to, to have everything? The first question was, should we postpone, right? So should we postpone the May event? Should we postpone Pig Weekend? And we needed 
more than just what was the swirl of, of what our government uh, agencies were telling us, what we were feeling, what we were hearing from all these different areas, we needed to hear directly from participants. So back in April, uh, we launched a survey of amongst um, flying pig participants, when will you feel safe? And ask them that question directly. And about half said, probably pretty soon, maybe the next three to six months, immediately that put us beyond pig weekend. <laughs> And we said, okay, great. Um, but many other folks were saying more like six to nine months. So after we made the decision to postpone um, until the fall, we then relaunched the survey in June to say, has, has the world changed enough? If you remember back to June, things were starting to open up and we were wondering, have they opened up enough? Do I have enough, con enough confidence um, to, to really hold the events in, uh, in real time? We did see those numbers increase. Uh, we went from about 50% of people saying the next three to six months, which would have put us right in the, uh, the October timeframe to run things um, to about 65%, but it really was, it, it, it just wasn't comfortable enough um, to really do it. And, and as we know, and have learned over the last, you know, several months as Boston has canceled, as Chicago has canceled and, and gone all virtual, we made the right call. And I think that so much of the planning for 2021 now, we might as well skip on to 2021. Right. <laughs> so much of the planning now is, will you feel comfortable? And that may mean another survey toward the beginning of the year, because the beginning of the year is when so many of these participants really start their training for 2021 events. Absolutely. And, and so what does that look like from a sanitation standpoint? What does that look like from a crowd standpoint? Do we change everything in terms of the corral system? Do we have things spread and, and worked differently? Um, there are so many creative ways in which we can attack um, these things and so much is on the table. At that point, we're going to need the feedback from our participants to say, what do you need? What do you, what do you have to have to feel comfortable? Um, to enjoy everything that the pig is and what you've experienced over the, over the years um, and, and get back to racing um, in, a, in a real life format. And I remember even early in this, as you said, maybe April and May, I remember getting surveys from, from venues, music venues, yep, saying sure. basically the same thing, what will make you feel comfortable. Seeing what you have, heard so far from so sure. many of these people who have finished um, the surveys. When do you think people will feel comfortable? <laughs> um, there's, there's a decent chunk that will say not until there's a vaccine. There's just a, a, a decent percentage of people who will not feel comfortable until we have, we have that in place. Um, and then you see a graduation um, of this. We, we've actually done some work at Burke where we have uh, done a segmentation study of people's attitudes and beliefs around the COVID um, experience and, uh, and found a lot that uh, fall along the stage, uh, life stage. So you've got groups of younger people, middle-aged folks and a little bit older folks um, who say, you know, I, I'm just not comfortable um, doing some of the things that I used to do. And then we've got a different group that say, no, I'm extremely comfortable. Why are we waiting? What are we doing? Why are we holding back? Why have we done all these things? And, and, uh, and we see that divide playing out. Um, so we have groups of young, we have two groups of young folks who are risk tolerant or risk averse. Folks in the in more middle who are risk tolerant, risk averse and have kids in their home taking online school, sometimes going to school, sometimes coming home, maybe doing some sports, maybe running it's all over the board right and 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 how do you do that and then you've got some older folks who have just they're not comfortable going out we, we've talked to uh um several older couples um some who really have have honestly not left their house since march hmm. wow. and have relied on all of uh all of the the growth in in you know certainly what Kroger and others have done in terms of the the ability to to get things brought to them um you know in in a uh, um a virtual a virtual way so um it's it's just been really crazy <laughs> to, yeah. to to keep track of and and just like we're doing with the pig this is what we try to do with our clients to help them 
through all this? What what are the right levers to pull um, to to really meet the needs of their their customers and their uh, consumers? Yeah, I think if there's uh, one positive that uh, I saw out of that survey, it was that that people do feel that nine to twelve months from now they're ready to get back. Yep, for sure, they are ready to go. Um, we there's a way there's a way to do this right we, we we need to put assurances in place we need to uh to make the environment such um and i think we'll i think we're going to do that and i think we're going to do it really really well and uh um and, and get people back to racing we are certainly hoping so across the board well it's a fascinating look at what participants think about the flying pig marathon and when they think they will be back at the start line michael Lauts. Burke Incorporated. Thank you so much for being with us on Pigs on the Run.